Okay, so this might give us some chance of avoiding the big lumps, but then there are going to be a lot of small lumps that are not tracked. Uh, what happens if one of those hits a spacecraft? Yeah, and this is actually the majority of damage and impact from space junk. Very rarely is it big things. As he said, we can track them, we can maneuver them. It's all these little bits that can happen. And as we saw, the debris drastically outnumbers the big bits. Exactly. So here's an example from the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, um, we love it. And on the side, on, the, on this little bay, they had this port. Uh, and what they saw was, you know, so this is 100 micrometers. So this is much, much smaller than a centimeter. Yeah, that's a tenth of a millimeter. Exactly. Yeah. This is a very tiny hole. But as you see, this hole, so this is kind of the inside and the outside taken to it, is cleanly punctured. And keeping in mind, it's metal. Um, uh, by a small piece of debris. So the debris obviously was smaller than the hole in order for it to go all the way through. So we're talking about something that's a tenth of a millimeter so penetrating. Fairly visible to the human yeah, eye. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like taking a thing of dust would be bigger, right? And it perfectly penetrates the outside of the space telescope. This is the impact from a side on of another case. So again, this is a metal sheet. And this looks like a bullet. But, you know, we're talking about a thick slab of metal from, again, something very tiny. This is one of the more famous examples. Uh, this is from the window of the Space Shuttle Endeavor, I think it was, um, Mission 7. Now, the Space Shuttle had well, bulletproof glass, right? They knew that there would be debris. They knew there'd be micrometeorites as well. So they weren't going to put a, you know, ordinary piece of glass in space. You can see this shattering was from a piece of paint. So a flake of paint, if I scratched the wall and I threw it at you, created this shattering impact, which again is a millimeter in bulletproof glass. And this is actually why the space shuttle yeah. stopped painting its, its external fuel tank. Exactly. If you look at the early launches, it was a beautiful white external fuel tank. And in the later launches, it's the sort of orange color of the underlying insulation, I guess. That's right. And first of all, that saved a lot of weight. Yep. Um, but also that paint was then flaking off when it was left in orbit and producing chips in the windscreen. That's right. I mean, you would actually see on launches all these little bits falling off. And it's like, well, that's, they realize this is just falling off in space. So, yeah, we are talking about here small things. Again, here is the scale uh, of uh, another piece of metal that is just completely punctured. I mean, this looks like an explosion, but this is purely from a small bit of debris. So this is really the crux of the problem. We have small debris that can travel 25 or 30 or 40,000 kilometers an hour. We have a lot of it. We can't really track it. We don't really know where it's going and it could be up there for an awful long time. And this is the result of it, is that this can generate a huge amount of damage and impact. And it may not destroy the satellite, right? The Hubble Space Telescope was still intact after this. But if it hits the right component, if this hit the mirror of the Hubble Space Telescope, we would have a piece of space junk. Went through and hit one of the silicon chips to control something. Exactly. Punctures a hole in a wall or something airtight. It, it just needs to be the right spot of the right thing. And now all of a sudden it's a useless piece of junk. And so now that is more junk. And so this is the, the, the inherent worry is as we build up more of this junk, as it propagates through, and as we can't track it, the, the real damage and the real impacts are, are there.